Avocado, how are you? I am having the best day ever by far. So where are you? What are you doing here? I am having the most incredible weekend meeting the New York Jets tomorrow, Saturday going to a party, Sunday going to a spring in the North Georgia mountains for two days, going back to Southern California for one day of meetings, then heading to Hawaii for six weeks. How about that, Ross CEO? I mean, that sounds like the best ever. It's un what are you going to talk to the Jets about? We're going to talk about superfood nutrition. We're going to talk about grounding and recovery systems for restoring injuries. We're going to talk about getting on board with real hydration. And we're going to talk about having the best health ever. Because just because people are fit or incredible athletes doesn't actually mean they're healthy. Very important distinction. Wow. And what do you recommend that people drink first thing in their morning? I recommend that they get the purest water they can possibly find, add a pinch of Celtic sea salt to it, spin it around with a lemon, a little bit of MSM, and guzzle it down and enjoy the most incredible hydrating beverage they can have first thing in the morning. Wow. And when should people's last meal be? Last meal should be around sunset. Eating after that is just purely for fun and should not be a meal. It shouldn't be a big dinner. It should be like eating an orange or an apple or something just, you know, neat and interesting, but nothing that's heavy because we don't want to spend all night digesting. We want to wake up in the morning fresh, rip-roaring, ready to go. I hear a lot about this acid-alkaline balance. What, what does that mean for people? This is what it means. Erase all the data on that. It just means this. You have to have vegetables every day and preferably green vegetables. You have to have some herbs every day. And you just make of that what you wish. If you like oregano, great, have oregano. If you're into medicinal mushrooms as your herbs, great. If you're into Chinese herbs, great. Vegetable juice is a real simple and easy way to get alkaline. Drink your juice every day. Get alkaline. Get to Organic Avenue and experience the true vitality and joy of living. Wow. And people talk about sleep. How many hours of sleep should people be getting? Anybody who's sleeping more than six hours a night is clearly in a danger zone of being very, very unhealthy. We should be around three to four hours a night. That's what's normal, really, for you know, humans. And most of the time, we're sleeping because we're digesting. Digesting causes sleeping. Wow. And in terms of eating salads, do, do you chew your salad? Do most people, are they supposed to chew the salad or just inhale it like an animal? Well, the, the, the old phrase is chew your juice, drink your food. Chew your juice, drink your food. Every mouthful of food should be chewed at least 100 times. And that's a great discipline to have. When you do that, you make it so much easier. Your digestion becomes so much better. It's just a lot more fun to eat because you don't need that much. Now, what about colonics? Like I hear a lot about colonics and people say they're not natural. Oh, what about, what's your feeling on colonics? Here's what's not natural. People being full of shit. Literally, metaphysically, metaphorically, in every other direction. People are full of shit and they need to get that shit flushed out. And the best way to do that is stick a tube up their ass and literally flush that stuff out. And people go, well, why should I do it? Well, do it and you'll see how much stuff comes out. I had a friend of mine did 30 days of colonics in a row. And literally every day was shocked at what came out of him. Just shocked. Each and every day was like, what? There's more? There's more? There's more? Yes, there's more. You cannot believe how many toxins are sequestered in the human body and how much better you will instantly feel as soon as you get those toxins out. And the best way to do that is colonics. Well, and when, when you see people with a pot belly, what is in that pot belly? tapeworms, mucoid plaque, undigested protein, all different kinds of bacteria that are harmful, potential fungus, yeast, and mold, and beyond that, cancer cells. So that pot belly is a signal of extreme toxicity, and we've just got to start with the cleansing activity. It's the only solution. Literally, at that point, you just need to stick a hose up their ass and flush out the cooked shit. So if you get like the 30 days of colonics, will the pot belly go away? It will, it will be significantly improved. That's for sure, because a lot of that's inflammation, too. I mean, everybody's so puffy, right? Their body's puffy, their belly's puffy. What's that? That's inflammation. What's, cause, what's causing inflammation? Allergies, reactions to undigested foods, foods that have chemistries that the body doesn't even know what it is. They're just trying to get rid of it. And there are so many problems that the body's dealing with already. It's like, you know, too much to deal with. So this causes an inflammation. It causes water retention. It causes... Um, the buildup of calcification, 
And when you start getting into people's bodies and you start feeling in there, you get in there, they're in pain. What's causing the pain? You feel that there's these lumps and hard stuff in there and gritty stuff, it's calcification. That means that they're on their way down. You know, it's amazing to me that people can live 80 years on toxic stuff in a toxic environment. Imagine if you ate healthy stuff in a healthy environment, what would happen? You know, we are so far limiting our longevity. In fact, people are not living longer. We know that. They're dying longer. Wow. And, you know, I've been hearing, and it's just kind of random, but like almost every woman under 40 that I speak to has some sort of uh, pre um, cervical type of um, cyst or cyst or HPV, bad smear or HPV. Yeah, or what's all that. that about? What what what's causing all that? What's causing all that is the toxicity of men, first of all. So if you're not using protection, then what's happening is is the men's sexual fluids contain all kinds of viruses and toxins and literal toxins and chemicals, and then that they're exposing the woman's reproductive organs to all of that stuff. Not only that, the woman herself, she's got to clean up her act. I mean, we've got to get those reproductive organs cleansed. How do you do that? Well, you need sulfur to do it, actually. The sulfur oils in cayenne, in garlic, in onions, in the mustard family of plants, which includes um, broccoli, cauliflower, maca, and all and arugula, all of that stuff can help to begin to cleanse that stuff out and get the viruses out and lower that toxic load. If you can bring in vegetables and vegetable juices, lowers that toxic load, starts to bring things into balance. And of course, superfoods, the green superfoods like chlorella, blue-green algae, spirulina, marine phytoplankton, critical in bringing that toxic load down and in helping to chelate out all of the heavy metals that we've accumulated. For example, if you look in someone's mouth and you see mercury in their mouth, that's a danger zone because mercury is the most toxic substance known. It's more toxic than DDT and it's in people's mouths. Right from that point on, our growth, our development, our neurological function is all disturbed. How do we start? Well, we've got to start chelating out what has already got into our system, and then literally we have to go see a dentist and get that stuff changed and put something in that's non-toxic. So if you meet a woman who's 25 years old and she goes to the doctor, she has an irregular pap smear, and it says there's some growth there, the first thing like the OBGYN wants to do is um, some sort of scraping or surgery or a leap procedure to remove that. Um, what do you recommend that they do? Is there a, a way of dealing with it without the surgery? Absolutely. Well, friendly probiotic bacteria, first of all, are the natural enemies of viruses and fungus and things that cause a poor pap smear. So what are we going to do? We've got to first get onto like health food and then friendly bacteria because when a woman has real bad candida problems, when her balance of friendly organisms that live inside her reproductive system also live inside our mouth and live inside our intestines, when that balance has been thrown off and then we have a bad pap smear, well, it's indicating that the biology and the terrain, the actual environment inside our biological home, we call our biome, is disturbed. Okay, it's disturbed. Well, all we got to do is just get back to fixing it. Chemicals don't fix it, drugs don't fix it, pharmaceuticals don't fix it, and surgeries don't fix it. What fixes it? Eating the right kind of food. You are what you eat actually trumps all of those other things. You are what you eat is the foundational law of all of life, actually. It's even beyond nutrition. If you think about that phrase, I mean, how many phrases do we know as, that are as powerful as you are what you eat? There isn't any. It's the most powerful phrase that we got when we first were incarnated into this world. So um, what's your feeling on low glycemic versus, you know, um, eating fruit? Um, like fruit is good, and a lot of raw foodists eat fruit. Um, where does fruit fit in? Fruit is something you should not eat if you have um, critters living in your system. For example, if you have a high parasite load, which is like, how do you know? Well, let's say you eat sugar, anything sweet, and let's say it's fruit, and your whole body freaks out, that means you've got critters living in you because those critters like sugar. And they like all kinds of sugar. They like fruit sugar. They like every kind of sugar. I'm just reaching in here for my favorite low glycemic treat, which is bee pollen. Look at that. You want to know what David Wolf eats as a midnight snack? There it is. Bee pollen. And here's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be guzzling this. It's low glycemic, but completely nutritious. This is the food and medicine of the future. Superfoods are the food and medicine of the future. 
definitely we want to be looking at a low